How are Hello, you? this is Ed Rigsby here with another uh, raw and unedited live, the place where association executives like you get tips, tactics, innovation, insight, and solutions all to make you a more effective association executive. Have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered? How can I take advantage of my expo? How can I use my expo to get more members? Well, if you've ever wondered about that, we've got some answers. With me today is Tom Pappas. He's the executive director of the Western States Roofing Contractors Association out of Morgan Hill, California. And his organization has done some pretty exciting things the last couple of years. Tom, welcome to Raw and Unedited. Thanks, Ed. Always hey. good to see you, man. You're welcome. So let's start with all the really good stuff that everybody's going to really want to know. Like people are going to be thinking about, okay, so um, how do we do it? You know, and why don't you start off by telling the people about uh, the idea of a, uh, a member booth, member hut, member corral, um, briefly how you put it together. And you've done it two years now. So what were some of your results? Right. Yeah, um, we just had our largest expo ever. Over 4,000 people were the second largest expo in the country, uh, of which we're very proud. But obviously, that presents opportunities and challenges. So one of the things we were talking about is uh, we put together, uh, with your help and obviously a lot of brain power, put together um, two strategic um, ideas, if you want to call it that. One is a member booth member orientation booth or a member acquisition and retention booth. And the other this year for the first time was a member um, lounge where the members, uh, current members could come in and get out of the hubbub, have a cup of coffee and that type of thing. So kind of a bifurcated system, if you want to call it that. Uh, we, uh, we had, uh, like I said, over 4,000 people of those. We have the vast majority of those attendees at our expo are non-member contractors. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of fish in the barrel, obviously. So what we did is we, uh, we, we had two strategies, one for the booth and one for the member lounge. So the one for the booth was primarily the, the, the replication of the one last year, which was so successful. And that is uh, we had some sort of member love, what we call member love in our booth. It happened to be beer this time and it was last year. Um, and you got a token if you were a member and you came back and you got a, you got a beer in a classic uh, uh, Western States mug. And uh, thanks for being a member. Just thanks for being a member. Anything we can do any better? No. About, about a, I would say no more than a five minute re interaction. And remember, 3,500 to 4,000 people, a lot of folks walking around and especially when there's beer. So that having been said, you go along and um, did the same thing this year. So had the same interaction, same interaction. Then what would happen is, okay, you say what happens to the non-member or the, 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 the prospective member is what we call them. Uh, well, we strategically have those people, we have our members identified so well with badges and lanyards and things like that, that um, the non-member pretty much stands out pretty well. So as they're walking by our booth, we're able to actually spot them and they're seeing beer, they're seeing mugs, they're seeing people enjoying themselves, having good conversations, productive conversations. I'd like to be a part of that. And so they come over, how do I get a beer? Well, would you mind sitting down talking about Western States membership? And it was that simple, and by that we gained, I think, 17 members last year. Just, uh, that was just at the expo. The, the residual ended up being somewhere around 40 uh, with the follow-up. Uh, and then so they got four okay so 40 new members but also uh what was your contractor member count uh, well let's see our contractor member count there's 1500 exhibitors so that would be what 2500 contractors no, and of that i'm sorry yeah. your 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 contractors so you have 200 something contractor members we now have 300 and uh 323 contractor members 323 Yes. So last year, a year ago, when you added the 40 contractor members, how many did you have before that? 297. 
Okay, so close to 300. We, we had about a 10% growth just as a result of our activities at the expo. That was pretty substantial. It was. It was very substantial. It was the first time we had ever done it. And we had, you know, we had scripts. We were very nervous about doing all this and who could sell and who couldn't, and who could walk the walk and who could talk the talk. And uh, we found out very quickly. So let, let's, um, let's take uh, the people watching through, uh, let's go back uh, a year ago, your first time around. Uh, because somebody else, if they're going to do this, it's probably going to be their first time around. So you uh, walk us through what the booth looked like, how you had your, your, your staff and your volunteer leaders work in it, and, and give us the quick rundown on, on, on what happened for those two days. Well, uh, the first thing was our placement of our booth. Our booth used to be an add-on where we couldn't, it wasn't primary or very good uh, expo spot, if you want to call it that. It wasn't, it wasn't a prime spot. What we did is we exchanged that 180 degrees and we put that in a really prime spot right by our, what we call our demonstration stage, which is probably one of the most busiest places on the entire floor. So first of all, you have to look at it strategically putting your booth in the right place to get the maximum amount of just walk by traffic. So that was our first step. The next was to make it um, so that it was unique, individual, creative, everything like that. And it was, I have to say that it was, just, it was in terms of its design and everything, it was a step above most other booths around it. Uh, it was, it was right in line with all the other productions we did. Uh, we furnished it very nicely. Uh, we had beer available and these nice mugs and everything like that. And the way we stri strategically designed this was it was a square, it was a square, excuse me, a rectangle with one backside, the backside being, of course, the curtain or the wall that we had, and then three sides being open. And we had the exhibitors or the attendees walking the outside, the perimeter of the rectangle. And we have one small opening. And then we had all of our leaders, our volunteers, our staff people inside the booth talking about that, handing out beer, serving, serving, if you will, and, and talking membership over the counter. We had a counter. And so people were talking membership over the counter. I would say not superficially, but not in depth to the point of making a decision to become a member. And then at that point, all of a sudden, if, if the green light, if, 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 you know, if it turned green, if it went from red to green or yellow, whatever the case may be, we brought them into the booth, sat them down in a more comfortable, more segregated environment, had a more substantial conversation with them, maybe gave them another beer, and then uh, closed the deal. So walk by traffic, ambient noise, people everywhere, beer flowing, not, you know, unrestrictedly, but, you know, well, and that type of thing. And the real question was, I think, was key, was what's going on inside of that booth? What are they talking about? And we had some of our speakers, some of our seminar presenters and that type of thing in there that people had seen on the, during the trade show in there with us. So they knew the content. So as a result, they, uh, uh, they said, what's going on in there? And I think that attributed itself, the, the structure, the placement, um, the quasi exclusivity, if you want to call it that, um, drove the, some of the success we had. And describe what the booth looked like from the outside. I mean, as far as top, bottom, the, you know, you said it, it was on par with uh, the, the better level booths. Um, it, it, looked like a, it looked like a bistro, uh, bistro bar. Got it. It did. It, it was a counter. We had uh, metal trusses over the top. They were all uh, drop lighted down. So you were working kind of like in a, in a pub atmosphere. It almost looked like a pub, if you want to call it that. Very attractive and had stools on the outside. Um, not overly comfortable stools, but stools. Yeah. And <laughs> so yeah. we don't want people to hang out there, you know, that type of thing. So On, on the inside, <clears throat> tell, tell us about how you uh, closed the deal and took the money. Was that staff or volunteer leaders? That was staff. That was staff. Staff was always handling the money. Uh, staff would ultimately uh, give, give uh, be handed the um uh, give the handoff by the volunteer leader uh, to process, process, if you will, the, the, uh, the deal. 
And um, we found that to be, first of all, very accountable. That we didn't want, you know, volunteer leaders having to be worrying about money and exchanging in forms and that kind of thing. And second of all, because of the regular program, as you mentioned earlier, it really helped because these guys would just walk these guys over proudly and make sure they got credit for that guy that they just signed up. So it was kind of a cool uh, dynamic within the booth as well. So um, <clears throat> it was kind of like you had staff and volunteer leaders working in partnership. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't happen without it. And uh, how many hours a day was this? Uh, it was only open during the trade show hours, and so that's uh, uh, four days one day and five uh, four hours one day and five hours the next. So in nine hours, um, a year ago you got what was it, seventeen something members plus uh, followed up for another forty. Yeah. So in basically one day's work. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, we could How multiply you... that times three sixty five. We'd be a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, be, we'd be writing membership books. Uh, how did you get your um, How did you get your volunteer leaders to participate? Um, we pre-qualified them, which is kind of an interesting thing for volunteer leaders to have to be be subjected to. But uh, last year, uh, our focus was membership. Membership. Membership is everyone's business, and everyone really took that to heart. And so, as a result, um, we had a script for you. Uh, we were monitoring whether or not you were staying on script or whether or not you were just using our booth as an opportunity to chat with your old buddies. And if you were, we did have some volunteer leaders that were asked to, you know, maybe go on the outside of the booth. So that's how we kind of, uh, we did that. So it was, it was pretty structured. Uh, I think the first year it had to be. This year it was less structured, and I have to be honest with you, it probably wasn't as successful as our growth was. So next year we have to go back to the structured way of informing and advising our volunteer leaders that this is not your opportunity to be in a really fancy booth and talk to your friends. This is an opportunity to sell Western states and do it with our resources. So. It, 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 it's interesting because um, listening to you talk about, okay, year one, a lot of structure and everybody really had their nose to the grindstone and you came off of great success. And then year two kind of eased it up a bit and people kind of fell apart a little bit. So I'm kind of hearing from you that to make something like this uh, a viable and a successful uh, endeavor, each year it's got to be just as structured as the year before. I, I think uh, two years into it, I would say that is an absolute fact. Um, we, we, uh, we gave some parameters, some leeway, some bullet points. I mean, we almost, last year we almost had talking points. And unless we heard those talking points going across the, the desk, it was like, okay, nix it, move on, whatever the case may be. So, um, I guess our, our motto last year was very strongly put, okay, current member, handshake and a thank you, Pr prospective member, handshake and interaction. And that, that, I don't think it was as strongly emphasized this year, and I don't have the final numbers for this year. We just got out of there just about a week ago, but uh, I, I think that the growth of the show and the membership growth at the as a result of the booth uh, will not be reflected in that. So the lack of structure, the lack of specific and identifiable and, you know, concrete direction probably cost us a little bit. Hopefully we made, hopefully we made up for that in the member lounge aspect of what we did, which was a new thing for us this year. So um, tell, tell us about, um, you brought out the, uh, the belt buckle award for the, um, the uh, person that uh, brought in the, the most new members and it was about an 18 month or something like that process. Tell us about that. How'd that go for you? Oh my gosh. It was, uh, we didn't know how good it was going to be. Um, uh, this, the person that does the NFR or NFR national finals rodeo in Las Vegas. Okay. They're the ones that designed and made our buckle. So it's quite, quite the buckle. And so as a result, it's quite a showpiece and we actually displayed it in our booth under 
strong lights and everything like that last year, but goes, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna get that, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna get that. Well, not so much ooh, ooh by too many people. But um, the night we gave it away, we gave it away at our big party night, uh, our scholarship night and everything like that. The gentleman, went, he brought in 17 members and he said he actually held a few back for this year. <laughs> so he's, he's sandbagging, because he, he, I said, well, I told this gentleman, I says, you do realize that, you know, it, it's a new one every year. It's not, you know, we're not going to redate it for you because each one's dated. And you can't, you can't buy it, can't get in a store. You can only earn it by getting members. And he got 17 on his own. He says, well, then I'll be one of the few guys that has two belt buckles on one belt. I said, I got no problem with that. <laughs> so bottom line is it was announced in front of our largest gathering of single people, that was about 600 people, in a, in a very nice event, very nice venue. And he was so proud. Uh, this gentleman, you'd have to know him, to know that when he's speechless, that's a real accomplishment. It's kind of like me being speechless, Ed. It really is. I mean, when was the last time you ever had to say anything to me, really, to get me started? Yeah. Not too sure. But yeah. um, so a couple thoughts. So for the belt, the belt buckle, um, because you had this 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 uh, membership prize, this prize for the one that recruited the most members, that you know you had for quite a long period of time. They saw it last year at the show, this year at the show, mm -hmm. and because of the fact that, as you said, that they can't buy it, you just really plugged into to uh, to that competitive psyche of uh, of wanting to to be the winner, and. Um, uh, who was the, uh, I don't want names, but you say that the winner got 17 new members. What was the, 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 the first runner up? How many did they get? I would say, I'm trying to think, 13. Oh, so it wasn't that far apart. Oh, wow. No. And, and quite honestly, uh, those that tended to talk more smack were a little bit further down the line than those that talked less smack. So, you know what we know about what walks and what talks. There you go. And so as a result, we uh, the, the the guy that that won it absolutely deserved it and was thrilled beyond. I mean, we've got pictures of him in our website and all kind of stuff. Ah, that's great. Yeah. So you know, Tom, um, what are what are some of the lessons learned? I mean, you know, every time we do something and we have a success, there's always some things we could probably do a little bit better. And looking ahead. What are some of the lessons learned this year that you might uh, tweak for next year? Um, one of the things we tweaked from last year to this year, which I think was a good thing, was that we put the beer a little less accessible than it was before. Before you could walk by, grab it, if you were a little bit rude, grab one and keep going. Same with water, same with wine and everything. This year we put it in the back of the booth. So you really had to enter, enter into the the, the, the gauntlet, if you want to call it that, to, to do that. So that was, a, that was something we found last year. We'd spend, you know, Las Vegas beer is very expensive. So as a result, um, we spent the same amount of beer, but we got much greater result in terms of interaction. So that's one thing we learned. The one thing I found out, and I was just talking with, uh, with uh, Alec, uh, our, our director of membership, was um, that we need to be more strategically firm with our volunteer leaders. And we need to be more structured with them. Structure will set you free. And have you ever heard That's that? Yeah. Yeah, amazing how those words come back to haunt you or find you. Or <laughs> I'll tell you that thing. Um, in in all aspects of my work, uh, not in I mean the expo we're talking about, but quite frankly, uh, we found that uh, structure has set us free in so many areas of the association. Uh, not just the expo, but speaking of the expo, I think structure. I think maintaining the structure, even in the side, even in the uh, what do you want to call it? Even in view of the size that we're growing bigger and bigger and bigger, and people are being stretched further and further and further, and that type of thing, you still have to maintain that structure because if you don't, then all of a sudden you have these little uh, corners that people can hide. And our booth is big enough. I mean, our next next year's booth is going to actually be bigger than this one because of the interaction we have and the way we're designing it and the fact that it's successful. So we have to make less corners for them to hide. And be able to do that, we have to have people in the, committed to the, to the mission of 
getting new members and thanking current members. So I think that was probably the biggest takeaway that I saw. Unfortunately, you know, as you could well imagine, walking around and I'm just on a headset and I'm on three headsets and cell phone and everything during the thing. I don't get in a lot of opportunity to go back there, but I purpose to go back there because it was really a wonderful experience. Just saying hello to everybody that was working back there, thanking them and all that kind of thing. But uh, I think that end results wise, I think that's probably going to be our biggest thing. And next year with our show floor, uh, we expanded to the full show floor that's available to us at the Paris Las Vegas. So we're going to re, again, we're recalibrating because we didn't know we were going to use the whole show floor this year. We, we sold for minus one room. Well, we had a waiting list of 30 people. So we opened the, so it was a little unbalanced. We made this year's show so symmetrical, the show floor design, if you want to call it so symmetrical. And thus, our booth is now, while it was in a prominent place, a very high, now is going to be in the premier place. And we actually have people that are selecting booths based on where our booth is. That's pretty amazing. So, yeah, yeah that's very amazing. I mean, to where in, in, in two years, uh, the, the suppliers, the vendors, the partners, whatever we call them, the associates, you know, see the value of what you're doing and how you're grabbing people and creating uh, the buzz. So let me ask you this, as far as the logistics in the booth, I mean, you know, uh, getting the members from, uh, I'm sorry, getting the prospective members from your volunteer leaders to the staff, collecting their money, giving them their, um, their uh, yeah. member yeah. clap or whatever it is. You yeah, know. sure. How do the logistics on that work and any ideas for, um, give me the quick rundown on how the logistics on that worked and if you have any ideas on doing it better next year. I think this year we were too worried about making sure that they were included in the count in real time. Uh, we don't really, we're, we don't need to be as concerned about that. I don't need to be, as, as the staff leader, I don't need to be as concerned about the actual numbers because, you know, with as many people as we're processing and everything like that, I want to know numbers and I want them on the phone. And I want them in my ear and I want them right now. Well, I think what I need to do myself personally is I need to just back off of that a little bit and I need to let the process go. So what we've decided for this next year um, with a guy who you know hates uh, paper, he loves automation, is we're actually going to go to a paper application. You know, in our industry, uh, where we're kind of low tech and paper applications still are perfectly okay. So we're going to actually come away with what I hope to be is a stack of applications with credit card numbers, checks, whatever the case may be, in a very secure place, obviously. And then we will process those when we get back, back home, back here to Morgan Hill. So I think the idea of the immediacy, the immediacy of gratification as to how you did, because everybody wants to know the number and everybody wants to know how big. We, well, we can do that in some cases, but in this particular case, I think that the rush to the line was a bit premature and caused some loss of loss of membership opportunities. Quite frankly, I, 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 you know, okay, they're not a member until they're in the system. Well let's give a little leeway and to get into the system and then we'll ask the question because it's a matter of days. It's not a matter of, and you know, it's, it's not a big deal. So that for me is, it was a big, big deal because I'm kind of like a, you know, immediacy of a report is really important to me. And, and if we're doing something wrong, we need to fix it. And if we can fix it now, if not, we need to certainly fix it for next year. Well, why can't we do that a week after the expo as opposed to during the expo? Likelihood of fixing it during the expo, not likely at all. Sure. Well, you know, it, it's very cool that you identify areas where you can improve and you admit that you can improve and then you make plans for it because I got to tell you, Tom, I've met a lot of really cool executive directors and I've met some executive directors that are a little bit stubborn and, and, and it, it's always great when the chief staff executive can say, hey, here's how I can do better. And that, that's, that's awesome. That's Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate well, that. I'm always trying to learn. If I don't learn, I'm going backwards. And uh, these young people keep me uh, right on the edge of things. And sometimes they realize that maybe old school isn't the worst way to do it if I just allow, a little, cut them a little slack. So that's kind of a given. Thing. So, you know, um, over the last couple of years in the area of recruiting members, <clears throat> you know, 
what 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 are the key things that you've found to be uh, truths that you now wrap your arms around and it is becoming part of your organization? Um, it's not it's not what you have; it's what they need. Um, we have a smorgasbord of services, and we have well including associates and contractors, we have over 600, 630 members, okay? Everybody doesn't need every one. So the realization of the fact that you have to be listening for what that key need is, their primary need, what their pain is, whatever the case may be, and then in your quickness of mind and familiarity with the programs, understand how that will solve that pain. It has nothing to do with what we offer. If we offered four services and they were great services, but they applied to no one, who would join? Nobody. So as a result, we're going, okay, so I heard pain about X, Y, Z. And I'm sitting in the back of my mind, you know what? We don't have anything for X, Y, Z. We got, we got zilts for X, Y, Z. So let's put that in our little mind bank and let's, dig up some for XYZ because I'm guessing if I talk to one guy, there's more than one guy that told me that. On the other hand, if somebody said, you know what, you're, let's say for example, safety program. I've scrapped my custom safety program and I'm just using your safety program exclusively. Okay, that's great. My guess is to some degree or another, other people have used it. So, so we, we redouble our efforts towards that. So it, it, it helps us identify where to resource things more, more easily. So again, if, you, if you're listening more than you're talking, which is, you're doing a great job here, Ed, because I know you and I have had many conversations where, yeah, it's been, we've, well, let's put it this way. We spent a whole day together talking and I don't know how much work we got done, but we did, 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 did have great chats. Anyway, um, I think the idea is to make sure that you identify what the members' desires are and program and resource your way into those kinds of, and that's where you need to put your uh, identity, that's where you need to put your emphasis, you need to put your resources, everything that you have into that. And always be open to being surprised about the fact that, hey, I need ABC. You know, I never thought about you needing ABC because we don't know what they need. They know what they need. And if they're willing to tell us, then we ought to be willing to respond. That's great. No, that's awesome. You know, it, it um, um, really enjoyed working with your organization. Uh, had a lot of fun. Um, met a few stubborn people. Met a few really, really nice people. But um, really pleased that uh, that working together, we are able to move the needle a little bit. And, um, you know, I just want to thank you, Tom, so much for coming on, letting me interview you. Um, there's, I, I, I just know that there's lots of other subjects that we can talk about in the future, including working with boards of directors and other fun things like that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, no, it's, I really appreciate you talking about the whole uh, membership booth thing at your expo because I, I really believe that there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of other association executives that haven't embraced that idea in their expo to do it. So um, again, thank you very much. And until the next time, be well.